Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Today we will show you guys how to remove and replace radiator on Land Rover Discovery. This one specifically, 99-2000 model. Both of them, we have both of them and they're identical. I think uh, newer models like can 2003-4 will be the same. So we'll need to get a few screwdriver and there is a few clips. Okay, a few screws that we need to unscrew like that. You can see four. We'll need to pull the holes out of there. Okay, and we can remove that cover. Okay, it's still holding, this one here. So you have to be careful, okay. And pull it out, guys. This is the radiator right here. We have a video how to do a upper intake, remove alternator, all that kind of stuff. Many videos coming because we're doing engine replacement. As you know, on this one, it got overheated because somebody didn't replace the little holes and that caused the whole engine. So please check out the channel guys. Also mechaniclifestyle.com, our website. You can find more information, tools used and where to buy them from. So this is the fan, the fan clutch guys. It's okay, right here now. Uh, the special tool that they sell, it attaches to the three bolts, actually two of the bolts on the water pump okay let me get it okay just like that so we're gonna stick a screwdriver under the bottom bolt right here okay and while we're doing that i'm gonna get a uh, this one and uh, you need to check what size it is if you buy the kit with the two it comes with the with the big wrench in our case i think it's a 36 okay and we have it like that so we will actually need to come all the way here this one comes loose going counterclockwise. Okay, we need to go this way. So one person holding the screwdriver there will do it, but we recommend using the two only guys. So it's easier, it's really efficient. Okay, and now, okay, let's see. I think, I think it came loose, yep. Right here you can see the clutch now is loose. You can see how we are removing it now. Careful not to drop in the radiator. Once you remove it off the water pump. Okay, out of there now. So now we will remove the two screws guys here. Okay, let me turn the light on so you can see a little bit better. And the one on this side. So we need to be super gentle with that, that uh, holes here now. Okay, careful not to break it. That's where people break radiators and they overheat them. Okay, and the plastic cover is out of the way now. Okay, we'll remove that clamp. You need to replace that one here. Okay, so we can actually remove the holes. Okay, this is a little bit, you have to be very gentle because this here, it's a very thin plastic and it breaks here. And if you break it, you're gonna need to buy a brand new radiator for that purpose. Next with the 10 millimeter, we will need to remove this bolt right here that holds the radiator. Okay, like that. We have the same bolt on this side, we already removed it with the 10 millimeter. Okay, right, so we removed two nuts here, so we can pull the air box out of the way. This one, you grab it and you pull it out. It has rubber bushings on the bottom. It's really, really tight. Okay, but it will come out. Okay, you see, it will come out in a certain way. Okay, like that. Let me show you where the rubber bushings are, three of them on the bottom you can see where it goes one two three why we're doing that so because this radiator comes together with the two smaller radiators on the front which is really hard to remove and re because otherwise you have to remove those two radiators together with the big one you have to unhook transmission lines all kind of lines here and those are not easy sometimes believe me if you if you want go ahead that way do it try to get those out we're going to pull the battery out of the way now, the battery box right here. Okay. 
Leg down. Lift the battery up. And here we have four bolts that we will need to remove. We washed the engine bay the other day and we still have water inside. So four, or four bolts on the bottom, one on the side you can see. And preferably wear gloves guys here, you always have to wear gloves because that compartment here might have some acid from the, from the battery. They tend to leak sometimes and you don't want that on your fingers. You can see all that rust and it's still coming out easy. Okay, one more there. Under the jack there is another hidden bowl there. Okay, this one is out too. Well, let's see how we're going to pull it out of here now. Okay, just like that. Great. You can see how much room now we gain. It's all an easy thing I told you, but unfortunately, we'll be able to do it now. So now if we use a short screwdriver right here, there is one screw for that plastic piece right here, that mount. So we'll be able to pull it out and there is exactly the same thing on the other side, the same mount like that. So we'll just demonstrate on this side guys, you can see this is the mount where the radiator goes and the screw is right here with a few of screwdriver. This one has been removed in the past and it looks like they messed it a little bit, they messed it up. Okay, you can see it's almost out. Okay, this is the screw. That's what it looks like. Okay, you can see we can now pull it out of this bracket here. And we can actually remove the bracket and we will need to install it like in reverse order. Now right here, the little bottom radiator, there is another screw with a few of screwdriver that we're going to remove now. Okay, you can see that's the one I'm talking about. Once we remove it, we'll get back to it guys. So don't waste your time trying to take that thing off for about four or five minutes. Okay, the screw is out now. We're going to remove this one here on this side for the top radiator. The bottom one has a screw on the left side, the top one has a screw on the right side. And again, we'll need to use the little ratchet with the screwdriver to access it. Okay, like that. And we're going to take this one off now. It's not as easy as other vehicles, but it's doable. Okay, this one is out. And we dropped our screwdriver. So the top one, radiator, we'll pull it this way and it will come loose. And the other one, we'll pull it towards the other side. Okay, it's hard to show you guys, but 
It's stuck a little bit. And both of them are loose now. So we don't have to unhook anything else there. Make sure that this thing is not between the two radiators because it can damage them. And all we got left now is disconnect the top hose and the bottom hose there. Okay, and this one is still holding. Those clips are sometimes no fun. Clamps. Okay, one is out. Now we just have one more on this side. Okay, we got it out. All we have to do is slide the hose out of there now. We had a little bit of coolant left in it. Not much. And now we should be able to pull the radiator out. It's quite a bit of a job. Okay, I like that guys. This is the radiator out of the rover now. So that's how you guys remove it. Installation, it's in reverse order, everything in reverse order. Thank you guys for watching, please subscribe and let's grow the channel together.